Hello everybody, welcome to another video of mine. And this will be the first video from series called Template Showcase. And in this first video, we will be talking about Jibus Cross. So I will let you know some small things behind the templates which you probably did not know. And then we will look at the template itself. So what does it mean? How it looks like? What are some pluses, minuses of this template? And as well, you will quickly go through all towns and the options for the heroes which you would like to start. And as well, some quick write down of the, let's say, or tier list of all towns. So let's delay not longer and let's jump into that immediately. So let's start with some interesting packs about Chevus Cross. I will ask you a question. Do you know how old Chevus Cross is? Plus minus. Give me the year down in the comments and we will see if somebody of you was plus minus according to that number. I will give you a few seconds. You can pause the video and yeah, let's go. So the template at the minimum is 16 years old. Yes, 16 years old, which is incredible. If you think over that, right? I was really blown away by this fact. So it's, it's, it's really cool. And um, maybe you ask why Jibus Cross? So you know that episode from Simpson where Homer is, so uh, let's say, uh, saying Jesus, Jibus instead of Jesus. So that's, let's say the first part of the name. And the uh, second is uh, that the original creator, his nick at the time was Jebus Crisp. So, and from that, we came into the Jebus Cross. So it was, he named it like that after himself. So he said, okay, so this is how it will stay. And uh, yeah, it's 2022. And we are still saying Jebus Cross to the template. So that's really cool. So this is the small fact about the template, which is not, not, not that much known, let's say to the general community. So interesting fact, right? And now let's quickly look at the template itself, which you can see in the template editor. So let's jump into that. So now we are looking at the template editor. And as you know, Jibus Cross is containing five zones. It's always five. There are four biomes and in the middle you have the big one, the desert. You have connections, you can see number of mines in every biome and usually it's played 1v1, but of course you can play 2v2. There is no issue with that. So usually your biome is having low guards almost for every fight and the middle is heavily guarded and there is a huge huge rewards in so usually you really want to get in so this is just a short information how it looks like so now let's jump into the hero 3 and you can take a look itself on the map okay so when we are looking on the map so we can see four different zones biomes which are let's say the side biomes and in the middle we have desert when you are looking at the map so every let's say biome which you are starting or the side biomes they are having three towns so there is always one starting town which is having fort and two towns which are without fort and these are four zones like this so it's always you have fort and you have the side town and middle is being desert let's say yeah everybody is calling the desert or middle and it's uh, usually very high uh, reward. You have uh, really huge rewards in the middle, and you are you really want to push there as soon as possible, just because yeah, you can you can do big fights and you can get really good rewards. And with the towns, it's 
it matters in the way that there are uh, two towns in total. So there is always the middle faction, which is, let's say, defining all the boxes, all the dwellings. And there is one side down, which can be at, let's say, the entry point to the desert of any of these side biomes. So this is something which we need to consider because, let's say here in this case, red player is having a really big advantage that his town is immediately right after break. Because that means he can get mana, can send more heroes, right? Because when you look at the blue, blue is not having any towns. And one thing about Jewish Cross, which you really need to know, need to know that the size of the desert varies a lot. You can have small one like this, where let's say way to the middle is really short and desert itself is small and the biomes are really huge. And then you can have as well some other desert, which will generate, let's say that it's almost twice of size of this one, which we can see on the screen. So it uh, it's something to keep in mind when uh, you see the map and okay. So you can check, okay, so I have the town next to the break, so I can break, burn all mana on, on the on the break, get mana up there in the town. Or if I will be blue, I will know, okay, so I have a long way to the middle, because this is this example which we have is really show, short road to the middle, which you would like to always have. And when we are talking about the breaks, so you have usually one main break, which is on the road. Sometimes you have a second break, which is off road. Almost every case is you want to go via the road because uh, as the middle is sand, you are having a huge movement penalty. So you really want to avoid going for the side breaks. Of course, it can happen that um, Sometimes you are just not able to kill the main break and then you have to go for the side break. So in this case, for example, it's not that far from road. So for some reason you could use this. When we look on the blue, so we can see that uh, there is the, let's say the main break and the side break. And again, yeah, it's close to road, so maybe it would be as well usable. So it's something to keep in mind that uh, on Jebus Cross, you have one main break, which is on the road always, and the second, which is somewhere, let's say, off-road. Uh, same goes for the side biomes. So we have again one main break on the road and one off-road. And what, uh, let's say, <clears throat> what it goes about the biomes, so your biome and your opponent biome, they are usually very rich for all the resources, for the gold, for the precious, for the wood and ore. So you can see there is a lot of things on the map. And uh, yeah, so it means uh, these games are really fast. And I would say that most of the games on Jebus Cross will end like one to three. 1 to 4 at the latest at uh, higher elo because usually you are just looking for certain objects which will let's say enable you to break as soon as possible and these objects are of course the conservatory griffin conservatory where you can get angels then it's the wolf rider pickets where you can get cyclopses and of course it's dragonfly hive you can get, of course, the Red Tower, which will give you some Firebirds. And you can as well get Experimental Shops, which will give you Giants so here. So these are the, technically your main things which you are looking at uh, Jebus Cross. And usually these objects define your restarts. And of course you are looking as well for some high tier dwellings like this castle you are always looking for port of glory right because central is the best in it of course and uh, yeah you can hate it you can love it most likely your armor will be wyverns angels cyclops giants firebirds 95 percent of jebus cross games are like this 
so as I think you can love it or hate it. But it's something what uh, yeah, what is mostly happening. Then of course, when you get into the middle, you can get let's say some boxes which could which can give you the the army from boxes. So it's something, but still, all these let's say objective, all these hives, all these pickets are in middle priority. And of course, in middle you have really high chance for uh, relics, so you are able to get a lot of things done in middle. In your biomes you can as well get some relics, but they are pretty rare, and if you have them you are really happy about it, right? Because you can get uh, any relic as well in the biome, so I, like, you can get like Tomb of Earth, like next to the town, if you'll be real lucky. If your RNG skill is really good. That can easily happen. All right, so that's just short description how the layout looks like. And let me now jump into the towns which you can play and we'll go through all the heroes. I will quickly talk about all these choices. You are generating Jebus Cross. You can play extra large or large, it depends. It's same, just more. You can play up to four people can play on the on the map and you are always using the fastest round, no water and monster strength is always strong. So when we look at the town, so let's start from the top. So for castle, you have actually just one choice. You have to go Valeshka. Just because of the archers, there is like no other choice for you. Go Valeshka. Or Rampart. Or Rampart. Yeah, technically like two heroes which you can go for one of them is Ivor I would suggest Ivor is being the best pick because you are able to do uh, Wolf Rider pickets quite easily and then you can get Cyclopses some people prefer as well Mephala and uh, she's good for Hives mm. for Konsa so you just brawl the things for me Ivor is better but I can see that for other people, Mephala will be better. For Tower, this is actually tough. Uh, you have Solmer, of course, which you can start. And then you can go like Ain, you can go Iona, you can go Fafner. Uh, maybe you ask why these three heroes, right? It's because of Scholar, so. It means you are able to pass all the spells which are in, let's say, which you are buying from the heroes day one. Or if you are really hardcore fan of Tower, you can go as well for Josephine and get uh, these golems. That's also option. The next town is Inferno. So Inferno is again towns where you have two choices and of them is Skull. These are really good units, really good shooters, and in Honor of the Abyss they got really good buff with the AoE attack, which you can place on the ground. And the second choice is Ignatius. I would say Goal is better for players. Uh, who want to play normal game. Because uh, Ignatius is specific that he is outspeeding the Wolf Riders in Wolf Rider Pickens. So, this is where you really want to high roll. Because Skull cannot do Wolf Rider Pickets unless, until you get something like Efritz. So, these gameplays are completely different. So, it's something which you need to take care of when you are choosing that. Uh, with Necropolis, again. There is just one hero. You cannot choose anything else. And if you do, you will probably lose as Necropolis. You have to go always for Galfran. Always. You cannot go with something else. So don't even think about all the heroes. For dungeon, again. Again. I will repeat again. Only Shakti. Nothing else. Nothing else matters. If you get Almar in the tower, it's nice, but Shakti is always the main. 
just because of the power stack of the Drogold Heights, which you can have. For Stronghold, here we can say we have two heroes, which you can start, depends on the play style, because one of them is Tyraxor, because of the Wolf Riders. And this is kind of fun, but it's like glass cannon, right? You are playing units which dies when anything touch them, so... But Tyraxor is good hero, and the Wolf Riders are amazing. And the second choice, which I am, which I don't think is ever happening on some high elo games, but you could start with Gretchen as well. But I would not recommend it. But it's a choice. For Fortress, here you could argue, but no, there is just one hero which you can start, and that's Draken. It's similar like Shakti, so you have a lot of gnolls. Gnolls are super strong, especially on Draken because of that plus one speed. So just go Draken with Fortress, nothing else. Conflux. Conflux is a little bit tough, not gonna lie. So if you know how to play with Luna, meaning the firewall abuse, abuse, then go for Luna. If you are not that confident with her or you do not know how to handle her properly and what is the logic behind, let's say how to abuse the firewall, you have to go for Grindan or Labefa. You just level up Earth and you are good to go. And the last town we have Cove. And here we have the article three heroes which you could go for, but most of the people is going for Cassiopeia because you will get a big power stack of names and it can work and it definitely works. Then you could say that uh, some people are going for Derek, which is option as well, especially if you want to go for highs. So Derek is not bad, but Cassiopeia is better. And the last is Annabelle, but I don't think so. She is uh, being chosen on Jebus Cross that often. I'm sure she is still being chosen, maybe some, on some low elo, but usually it's Cassiopeia. And that's for the towns, for the heroes, which are being played mostly on Jebus Cross, unless you are, of course, playing some random. random uh, Cross. Now let's do a quick tier list of the towns from my point of view. Just keep that in mind. So the town number one is definitely the Necropolis with the Galfran. The second town which is behind is uh, Conflux if you are able to abuse things with the Luna. Then we have next level where I would say we have Dungeon, Castle, and Rampart. Next level, so we are getting into category of really bad towns. We have Fortress. It's still fine, but it's really like in the middle. Next, I would say next two towns, which are really close to each other, is Tower and Stronghold. And the second worst town is Cove. And actually the worst time ever on Jebus Cross is Inferno. Yeah, and it was just quick the list of the towns. If you would be interested in more details, just let me know in the comments and I will reply to any of your comments. So thank you all for watching. It was a pleasure to have you here, like always. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, subscribe if you are not one of my beloved subscribers and let me know if you like this format because as I said at the beginning it's series so I am planning to do all the templates which are in the game just to have like showcases for all templates which are in the game. So see you next time.